you may see these influencers and content creators online that kind of preach, oh, I'm consistent 24 seven, I never miss a day of training, I never miss a meal, whatever it may be. In most cases, they're, they're probably not being entirely truthful. banged my head on the door before filming this video. Hopefully that's got your attention, it's also actually true. So today is Thursday and we're gonna discuss some bits and bobs on the line about some bits and bobs on the line. Somebody actually sent this to me on Instagram, which is a video by Gains by Brains, in which she talks about how she changed her body a lot in six months and what she did differently. And they said, you know what Harry, this might be a really good video for you to have a gander at. And I said, you know, it, it probably would be. So this video might actually be surprisingly informative, so stay tuned for that. Before we start with the video, you know what must occur. Light girls have been absolutely humdinged recently, made up on the spot, we're gonna go with it. Shocking behavior from you, but good shocking, not bad shocking. I say, let's tickle this goal, and you say, shut up Harry, try harder. That's pretty much what's going on right now. So for that, I do really appreciate it, so thank you very much. We're gonna keep the light goal consistent because I'm still doubting myself at this stage of my life. 750 likes in the first 24 hours is the challenge, so, I challenge you there. Let's see if we can absolutely obliterate it, which I know we will. So thank you in advance. Uh, you're watching this video. It might be the first video of mine you're seeing. It might actually be the tenth video of mine that you're seeing, and you're thinking, you know what? I don't mind him. He's a pale dude with a funny accent, probably quite a large forehead that he's hiding at the moment. But I don't mind him. If you are thinking just that, please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing to the channel. In addition to the bell next to it to get notified when I upload every week. At the end of the video, I do comment question of the week, in which I will answer a question from the comment section. So if you have a question you want me to answer, drop it down below and I shall answer it. It's video time. Uh, no it's not, I've lied to you. Please forgive me because I nearly forgot. Do I not look like a member of Team Rocket from Pokemon right now? If I could play an instrument beyond Guitar Hero, I'd be rocking out right now. Rock on, dude. Let's talk about things and learn some stuff, hopefully. So basically the premise of this video is Sophie, Games by Brains, is gonna talk us through what she did differently in her life, inside and outside of the gym, to help her yield greater results, training, eating, and all sorts. So I'm gonna dissect what she's saying and give my opinion regarding whether it's good source or not, and I will explain why in each case. I always do dynamic stretches as part of my warm-up routine, and they really help with improving your lifts, for example, with your squats or with your deadlifts. Yeah, don't Dynamic stretching is good. I do I do back it to some extent. No dynamic stretching alone will not increase the amount of muscle mass you gain, but improving your mobility, if mobility is something that you do struggle with, will benefit your movements, like your squats, your deadlifts, whatever it may be. If you can go through the range of motion more comfortably, if you can go through the range of motion more safely, and if you can go through a greater range of motion, i.e. potentially hit depth if you aren't able to, that is gonna benefit you and, and the gains. What I used to do with a combined lift is that I would kind of reset myself after every single rep, which is fine especially if your goal is to build your strength. However, if your goal is to build muscle, then time under tension is a very important variable you can play around with. So I'm gonna bring out some real sauce out. A lot of people probably won't like me for saying, if your goals are muscle gain, like optimizing hypertrophy and how much muscle you are gaining, as she is implying, of all the variables, when it comes to muscle building, time under tension actually isn't as important as you might think. The biggest factor that contributes to building muscle is mechanical tension. By that I mean essentially progressive overload. So either lift a heavier weight every week or do more reps every week. Every week, if possible, do more. You won't be able to progress each week. Sometimes one week you won't be like, oh, I match my reps, so that's fine. The next week, hopefully you can. If you can't progress for a bit, something needs to change. Maybe your workout routine, Maybe it's time to rotate the exercise out. Food intake might need to be reconsidered. If time under tension was as important as a lot of people claim it is, I'm not saying it's not important. I do think you should always control the movement. You could just lift a really, really, really light weight for a really, really, really long time and yield amazing results. Looking at the extreme example, let's say bodybuilders, for example, whose primary job is to build as much muscle as easily as possible. The biggest bodybuilders and the biggest people in general with the most muscle mass of any gender are usually the strongest. If you find a woman with mass amounts of muscle mass, she's probably very strong. Don't stress too much about time under tension. Stress more and prioritize lifting more or doing more each week 
whilst ensuring you are controlling the movement. Depth is good. Honestly, the technique's pretty solid. It's quite a narrow stance, and the shoes, I'm gonna question. Obviously, as you know, spongy shoes, not, not for me. But the technique is actually pretty solid. Always control the eccentric, obviously, as you know, but don't be afraid to be a bit more explosive with the concentric. By eccentric, I mean the way down, in which the muscle is stretching, and concentric, I mean the way up, in which the muscle is contracting. But yeah, realistically, to optimize building muscle, you have to take your muscles through a range of motion in which they lengthen, stretch, and shorten, contract, against resistance, weight. If you do unilateral exercises, which is a single side exercise, and you can perform, let's say, 12 reps with your left side and then 12 reps with your right side immediately afterwards, then you're not going hard enough. I don't actually disagree with this. It, it depends on the person, but realistically, if you are, let's assume, doing split squats, for example, which are the bane of my life, and it's a movement that causes me so much emotional pain, it's a joke. If you are looking to optimize hypertrophy, you should be training to or within close proximity of failure. If you do your left side and then immediately straight onto the right side, you can go again laughing, no issues. Could have probably given it a few more beans, you know? So when I'm doing split squats, for example, I'll do my left leg first, which is my weaker side. I always leave with the weaker side. I hit my failure, which is it's probably a lot quicker than you might think. I'll put the weights down, I'll reset for about 30 seconds, maybe less, and then go to the right side afterwards. But again, it, it depends on you. I would say when you are training unilateral based movements, it is probably a good shout having a bit of a break between the two sides, especially if you are really giving it the beans, you should be giving it. Let's have a gander at this technique. Bulgarian splits, I love it. You can do these with a barbell or dumbbell, completely up to you. It's really your choice. You also don't have to elevate the back foot if you don't want to, and how high you elevate it is also up to you. Find what's best for you, you know? You can have it on a high elevation like so, you could put it on a lower elevation, maybe like a couple of plates. You can even elevate the front foot if you'd like, which is actually one of my preferred means of doing so. You see here, she's really just dropping straight into the hole, not driving forward or anything. She's going straight down, straight up, getting a good stretch. See how the knees getting really close to the floor. Granted, not everybody has the mobility to do so. Always go through the full range of motion if you can. One more thing that made me really level up my workouts is that you have to control the negative part of the movement. This is more about just make, ensuring that the movement is controlled, safe and effective. You're going through the full range of motion without putting yourself at additional risk because you're bouncing off the bottom, you're shooting through it, you're going from contraction to stretch really quickly. A quick thing before she starts, I do want to say the leg extension is actually a movement you don't really need to exaggerate the stretch on and she's not shooting the leg all the way back and putting unnecessary pressure on her knees, which I do appreciate. I wouldn't be opposed to just squeezing for just like half a second, kind of almost doing a bit of a pause at the top of the rep in which you are contracting because this is the movement in which the quads are going to be at their shortest upon peak contraction and by that I mean when you get to the top of the rep and you contract and you're tensing the quads you know like fully extending the knee at that point the quad is at its most contracted i.e shortest position not many if, if any other movements allow you to shorten the quads to this extent for that reason I would be opposed to holding that peak contraction for a half second or so just to really emphasize fully shortening the muscle actually I've seen better results training my legs twice a week compared to training my legs three times a week in theory, you're thinking if I train a muscle group more times per week, I'm giving it more opportunities to grow and progress. Yes and no, like if you're training hard enough, it's going to be hard to train a muscle group three times a week. I'm not saying you can't, it just very much depends on the person. The big thing here is rest and recovery. If you don't rest and recover, you don't grow. Because you're not growing in the gym, you're growing when you're resting. You're doing the damage in the gym, you're repairing during recovery. If you intentionally make it yourself difficult for those 12 reps, and maybe if you reach 12 reps, you're like, I can do one more. Do one more. I'm not sure if she means prioritize the mind-muscle connection here, i.e. make the movement harder by hyper-focusing on the contraction. I'm not really big on the whole mind-muscle connection thing. I don't really think it's as much a thing as people say it is. Just because you can't feel it doesn't mean the muscles aren't working. To get through that range of motion, they have to be doing something. So yeah, I'm fully for like, obviously you want to feel the movement, feel the movement, but don't hyper-focus on mind-muscle connection, thus causing you to shift less weight or limit your, I guess, progressive overload ceiling. See, the goblet's what's a weird one like it's a nice movement it's really good technique there actually really solid depth but the thing with the goblet squat is i find especially if you're trying to look to push your body and movements to failure it's really hard to hit failure on the goblet squat because your arms are probably going to give out before your legs do you might compare it to like a front squat you're going to lift a lot more front squatting than you are goblet squatting with the less hindrances preventing you from reaching muscular failure on the muscles you are looking to train essentially your mind always wants to quit before your body does so you can push harder 
But as I said, we don't want to get injuries. So there is a difference between technical failure and mental failure. You can technical failure is an interesting one. There are a few kind of different types of failure. Like I said, mental failure might be one of them. There's muscular failure in which your body literally can't do any more. And there's technical failure in which your technique and form is breaking down. Slight form breakdown is okay, but form breakdown to the point of excessive risk of injury is not okay. If technical failure occurs and your technique is breaking down too much, you're spent. We call it there. Personally, I have been tracking macros for a long period of time. Tracking became kind of stressful. It's not really a relaxed approach to eating for me. I've always said this, the best diet for you is the one you can remain most consistent with. There's no universal best diet. At the end of the day, no, you don't have to train macros if you don't want to. Fitness is about enhancing your life, not hindering it. This behavior of tracking macros and being quite arguably obsessive with food can be deemed quite unhealthy and it can be quite triggering for many people. Therefore, if it triggers you and then leads to either disordered eating or potentially even, God forbid, an eating disorder, please don't engage in it. And what I'm about to say kind of applies to everything, not just macro tracking, but any facet of diet, whatever it may be. Whatever it is, is a rough guideline. If you go over, you go under, you don't stick to it, whatever it may be, it's okay. Nobody is 100% consistent 24 seven. If they claim they are, they're probably lying to you. We have good days, we have bad days. You don't have to stick to it. You can deviate from the path if you want to. If you go out for dinner, perhaps, and you say, oh, it doesn't fit my macros, who cares? Go for dinner, enjoy yourself, social gains. No, you won't lose progress because think if you think about how long it took you to make progress, do you really think you're gonna lose it that quickly? Sometimes if I don't hit my macros, I'm a bit like, I feel like a bit of a failure. To be honest, I feel like I've let myself down. I feel quite disappointed and guilty. But I, I remind myself, I train for fun. I train for enjoyment. I do this to enhance my life. When the guilt consumes me, that's not enhancing my life, that's hindering it. I'm likely never going to be a pro bodybuilder. I don't need to act like one. It's okay not to be perfect. Nobody else is perfect. There's one thing that we have been doing that made a huge difference, and that is actually that we got a routine. Again, I think sticking to a routine can be really beneficial for a lot of people. If you want a person who loves routine and that kind of structure, you don't have to stick to one. It's all about what's best for you. Sometimes life gets in the way. Sometimes something breaks your routine and it's okay if it does. If you have this idea on this day, this day, this day, I train, I work, I do this, I do this, but then something comes up which means you can't train, for example, it's okay. You're allowed to miss a session, but you can always make up for it. And hey, even if you can't make up for it, it doesn't matter, it's okay. I doubt it's gonna set you back. In fact, the extra recovery might do you good, who knows? You may see these influencers and content creators online that kind of preach, oh, I'm consistent 24 seven, I never miss a day of training, I never miss a meal, whatever it may be. In most cases, they're, they're probably not being entirely truthful. Nobody's perfect, no need to pretend you are. I miss sessions, I miss meals. I am not a perfect human. I don't pretend to be because it's not realistic. I think we should most likely strive towards wanting to be a happy human rather than a perfect human. But honestly, as a whole, a few bits and bobs that Sophie mentioned that I'm not fully on board with, such as obviously the time and attention things, etc., etc. In the grand scheme of things, pretty solid video. I do respect and appreciate that she is encouraging a lot of people to maybe think a bit differently about their training, their habits, whatever it may be. I do respect that she is being honest about her personal approach to health and fitness. But you've got to remember, this is her approach. Doesn't mean it should be your approach. You've got to do what's best for you. And you can't compare yourself to somebody online because they are not you. And a wise man actually wants once said, it's you versus you. But now, very quickly, we must do comment question of the week, and it's quite a lengthy one, so bear with me. I'll leave the full question on the screen for you to read, maybe pause, whatever it may be. Do you think a workout plan should be really varied, or is it okay to stick to somewhat the same workout schedule as long as you can keep progressing towards your goals and balance out the other muscle groups as well? This kind of sends into the whole, like, your body adapting to certain movements and shocking the muscle. I'm gonna be straight with you. Chuck that straight in the bin. I have done the same workout plan and the same movements for months now. I don't mean like a month or two. I mean four months maybe, if not longer. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Your body does not need them to be shocked. It doesn't exist. Shocking the muscles does not exist. If you can still progress with a movement, there's no need to change it. When you can no longer progress a movement, then I'd consider replacing that movement. And this is speaking, assuming you want to optimize hypertrophy. If enjoyment is more of a priority for you, then yeah, sure, change it up whenever you want. If you keep changing the movement over and over again, how are you gonna progressively overload? You're not gonna get familiar with the movement to then get better at said movement. You don't need to change things up all the time, but you can if you want to. For a mix between like ball Boredom and progress. I usually say change things up every four to eight weeks if you so wish. It doesn't actually prevent you from getting bored. But if you're looking at optimizing hypertrophy, you don't need to change workout plans and movements that often whatsoever, provided you are still progressing with them or provided your goals haven't changed. Like I said earlier, 
750 likes on the video in the first 24 hours is the challenge and the goal that I've set today, so let's see if we can smash that. Please do consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing to the channel, and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. And if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below for comment question of the week, and I shall do so. But now I must depart, I must love you and leave you, because this wig is extremely hot, uncomfortable and sweaty, and I don't like it, despite how cool it looks. Thank you for tolerating me, thank you for tolerating my wild new trim, I hope you liked it, and thank you for tolerating the video.